you remember the time you found us searching through the bins outside that fella's flat? Oh, yeah. Minging, I blanked that out. I know, I thought you were having me on. But, you know, some guys, they buzz off that kind of attention. What's this? Oh, nothing. Just... Natasha, um, the restraining order's been lifted now, though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I prefer my women to play a little bit more cool. <laughs> no, I mean, Natasha does cool, based on her performance in the factory last night. Hot and bothered, was she? Let's just say she took the conference call to new and dizzy heights. No, Keen's good. Makes a change. Sure it does. It's honest. I'm looking forward to seeing it tonight. Should be a laugh. Up and at them. Uh, did you want something? Only to bring you breakfast. Well, I hope it's high energy, because I've got a full day's itinerary planned for us. These boots were made for walking. That's just what they'll do. You look tired. I feel old. Newsflash, Rita. Most women your age are lolling in front of this morning with a rug round their legs. Not running a news agent from dawn till dusk. Well, it's taking it out of me, but it's not just that. I've had another run-in with Audrey. Oh, here we go again. Well, you know what she's like. I know what you're like, too. I promised myself I'd rise above it, turn the other cheek. Mm. Then she walked into the room. Well, I'm not acting peacemaker. Not after it blew up in my face the last time. But I will point you in the direction of Tina. That one? She'd cause a fight in an empty room. I mean to come back to the cabin. Oh. Her poor father's been dead for two months. Is it that long already? But I'm not saying she'll be over her grief, but she might be glad of a break from it. Not to mention the money. Good thinking, Kojak. Have a lollipop. It's a fine, thick head of hair for a man his age. It's one of his best features, where it's fab to run your fingers through. What with all that hairspray, dream on. Actually, David, he doesn't use a lot of products. There must be low lights. Oh, j you will get rid of those if someone comes in, I hope. Good ones, mind. Very subtle, but they've got to be. No one's that blessed. He really is. Mm. Do you know what I dreamt about last night? Mm -hmm. Hey, Grant. Need a sign above the door. No politics, no religion, and strictly no describing dreams. Oh, shush. What, darling? Doing mix. Oh. I woke up just before the final rinse. I am dying to get my hands on it again. Yeah, you got to be in the same room first. I'm seeing him tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah, right. And Lewis doesn't wear lifts in his shoes. Oh. Have your coat you pulled. Oh. For you. Oh, Lewis, they're beautiful. Just like their owner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> David, sweetheart, would you put these in water till home time? Look. Oh. You didn't get them from a petrol station? Could you fetch your jacket while you're out there? Look, I've I've booked vetoes. Easy on the hummus if you want to keep your clients and the paintwork. Oh. I've got one of my regulars at lunchtime in about ten minutes. Oh, Lewis. Uh, look, I can ring Vito's and see if they'll put it back till tonight. An appointment. New client. It's a concert followed by dinner. I can't muck around with the booking. Ah, so much for spontaneity. Uh, have you met this woman before? Well, she could be anyone. My money's on Amanda Holden. <laughs> you could call in on the way home. Too late. For a nightcap? Oh, you know I don't go to bed till all Really, I... I wouldn't want you waiting up. But uh, I could come over for breakfast. I'll warm the cross on. You warm the bed. 
Thanks for the beautiful flowers. Do you have to dash off? Couldn't you stay for a cuppa? Uh, put the kettle on, David. There's a good fellow. If you'd have seen the way she's treated Jason, sitting pretty in the pied de terre whilst he's shunted back to his mother's. Well, she's not exactly living the high life. <laughs> Would we know if she was? It's just a hypothetical. Oh, and you know, Jason was dead serious about that girl, giving up his Friday night drinking sessions with the lads and everything. All of a sudden, bang, the shutters go down and Jason doesn't exist anymore. He's tried calling, ringing, texting, short him through the front door. I think she's gone away. Oh, and you know, he's worked dead hard on that flat. Oh, no offence, Rita, but she's hardly on the big books working here, is she? Huh. But you watch. Oh, yes, she'll be front of the line with her hand out, demanding half the proceeds from the sale of that flat, if it's sold. Do you know they've not had a single viewing since that sale fell through? Well, all this has knocked her for six. Well, we've all had our losses, Rita. You just dust yourself off and you just get on with it, don't you? You don't wallow. Uh, I think she's probably just gone to stay at her mum's. Knocked on a few times for the window money, but she never answers. Well, who pays you normally? Mm-hmm. Jason. I'll tell you what, the place don't not lived in. Not that you nose it through the windows. No, no, not that. It's just from what I could sense. Well, I didn't sense it. I saw it. And there was definitely someone watching. The spirit of Joe? <laughs> Get you! Who needs Derek Okora when you've got this fella around? <laughs> <clears throat> She's on the phone. 2020. Fully operational, mate. We'll what come back later you? when she's not busy. She pines. <laughs> is that what she told you? She scratches at the door, howls at the moon, that kind of thing. I'm only thinking of you. Well, on your own head, be you. Uh, Nick! What's sucking it? What would make your day complete, apart from me sprinting around the factory in my undies? You'll tip me off, won't you? I might film it. Could go viral. Yeah. Bring the girls in. Why deny them? Yes, hello. Right, well, end of day Thursday, doll, were your exact words. Yes, I, I know Monday's a bank holiday. That's why I pushed your meeting back till Tuesday. I need the satins for that meeting, yes? Nick, where are you going? Bank. Right, we'll fill your tank up on the way. I might need to drive to Coventry. When? This afternoon. Sorry, no can do. Busy. Nick. You go. Get Tonto to ride shotgun. Nick! Yes, sorry, I'm still holding. Weatherfield's finest. Elliot's meat and tater. Or wafer thin ham salad on dry brown bread. The choice is yours. I'm trying to this and see. One, 12 cups of coffee and a sniff of a custard cream. Mm. <laughs> this is the color <laughs> color. <laughs> Don't tell me. Tom Ford flies into Weatherfield for the machinist of his dreams. Oak spade for missing kitten. Mm. Do you not ever feel that there's something missing, Rita? Oh. Afternoon. Oh, if I was 20 years older, Lush. <clears throat> Lewis, you're like a wayfarer bus. You wait ages for a sighting and then suddenly three turn up. Wayfarer bus? Mm. Nice little chassis. <clears throat> you can all be good to run. OK, I take it all back. But I have got the kettle on if you've got a minute. I might even run to a two-finger Kit Kat. Well, don't worry, I won't pounce. No, don't be silly. I, it was a very tempting offer, but I'm a bit late. For a very important day. Thanks, anyway. I'm very pleased for you and Audrey. Genuinely. Thank you. I presume you'll be winding down your hours now. You know, in the circumstances, I don't think that you and I... No, no, no. Sh wasn't asking professionally. I was thinking about Audrey. Oh. You will tread carefully because I think she might find it difficult waving you off to a new date every evening. If only I were that popular. No change, business as usual. And Audrey's taking it in her elegant stride. Good for her. Well, then, I wish you both the best of British. Bye. Ciao for now. Both boots had laces in. You saw them. Did you take them out to polish them? Oh, don't you know anything, Mary? You don't polish walking boots. You keep them watertight with dubbing. Do that and a good pair will last you a lifetime. Unless you lose a lace. I'll just make a start while you're looking. Yeah, Rita swear she saw someone behind the curtains. Too many wine gums. 
What if she's right? Well, it wouldn't have been a burglar, would it? I've been out in that flat worth robbing. No, Tina, what if she's not gone to her mum's after all? Oh, you two, you're like a couple of fishwives on my time. Um, that's a tad sexist, if you don't mind me saying, Arts. Emily is parched. I'm not. And I'm... I have got a European towel mountain growing by the hour. What's eating her? Don't know. But our best mate, like a banana. Um, let me just uh, leave you with one thought. Oh, must you? You don't miss your water till your wells run dry. Just come back when you need a haircut, not before. Now, tea and then towels, in that order. Yes, my commandant. Oh. We need those fabrics for Tuesday. And I'm not being a control freak here. You know we can't take any chances on this. I said, you drive. I can't, can I? I'm taking Jenna Cox out for dinner, remember? And I'm taking Natasha. Oh, come on, you know how much of a bowl breaker she is. Three months it's taken me to charm her into coming. There's a six-week waiting list at the restaurant. OK, look, I'm not telling you. I am asking you. As a partner, as a mate, please, just back me up. What are you doing? Avoiding you. Why? Well, not you exactly, just another ear bashing. Am I that bad? Not usually, no. Just other than yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Anybody who looks at me the wrong way these days seems to end up in the firing line. Well, I won't have to avoid you forever, just once all this gaddy business is over. Once he's been booted out of the army in disgrace, you mean, I'll find floating in the canal. That won't happen. Gaddy's got more sense. <sighs> He's sleeping rough. It's dog-eat-dog -dog out there. Yeah, and Daddy's a Rottweiler. Hey, don't cry, please. I'm not. Sorry, um... Got me pinning. <laughs> Stay to me. Buying food, cooking food, serving food up to folk. I can't keep anything down. These trackies used to dig in round the waist. Gary's fine, right? I know he is. <sighs> That's what everyone tells me. But when it's your own lad, your only lad, it's the not knowing that <laughs> cripples you. I'm not just saying it. I know he is, for sure. <sighs> I promised I wouldn't let on. Psst. Stuff promises. Well, it's not that he doesn't care about you. He's trying to protect you. Cut to the chase, lad. Well, he hasn't been sleeping rough. He's OK, at least for now. Where? Round and about. Weatherfield? Manchester? Weatherfield. And is he safe? He has been. He's a head worker, this one. Could be spinning as any old yarn just to watch us squirm. No, I've seen him. Is it money? Look, I've given him food. Here. If you don't believe he trusts me, listen. Him. Give... How long have you been watching us sweat? Look, where is he? Don't give me up look, the tail. Look, look, he's moving on today. Tell me, where is he? Lens. I don't believe it. The water's still warm. We've only missed him by minutes. Oh, seconds, minutes, hours, you don't matter, we've missed him. God knows where he'll run to now. At least here he was safe. Oh, come on. Let's tally up. Not a bad day's work. Where are yours? Oh, look at the nook in here. 
Larry Grayson, 1923 to 1995, born Banbury, England. What? You're winning entries. Where are they? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Crumbs everywhere. <laughs> You've let yourself down, Norris. Look, I didn't come to beautiful Bronte country to sit indoors, mainlining ginger nuts and scrambling four-letter words. You don't be petulant, all because you've lost a lace. Holidays are meant to be fun. Oh, isn't, isn't this fun? You, you, you said to read... I lied. You walked into the room when I was on the phone. I was trying to be polite, but I said, this just doesn't float my boat. All you had to do was say... Well, I'm sorry, I'm saying now. So, where do we go from here? But, well, you, you don't need to go anywhere. I, I'll ring Rita and, and ask her to come and, and take me home. You stay. It's, it's a pity to let the cottage go to waste. Today? Yeah, there's, there's no time like the present. Yeah, we had a wreck round this morning, and I thought, a taste of South Africa. Why not? Get us in mood. Biltong. Tongue. Biltong. It's also made out of ostrich and lamb occasionally. The Dutch settlers introduced it. It's a way of preserving the meat in the hot sun. And they call this a delicacy? You export it all over the world. So Spain, Switzerland, half time in a tense 2 2 draw, and this is what we'll get. Biltong. So wrong. Wild, wild. Couldn't drag me away. Do you have to do that now? Well, if Rita's coming, yes. You know what eagle eyes she's got. What the? Well, there's no doubt. What's the matter with this thing? Well, the socket's broken. Where? There, in the wall. It was all right yesterday. How did that happen? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe I knocked it with the hoover. Just now. How convenient. Oh, accidents happen, Norris. Well, they do when you're around. Phone from the village in the morning. No, I'll go. No, no, are you mad? Well, it's a long enough journey in daylight, but at dusk, well, that's one hell of a hop. Well, you, you, you drive me in the motorhome. It won't take long. Well, it's the least you can do under the circumstances. You're right. Of course. I've started, so I'll finish. Magnus Magnusson, born 1929 to 2007, born Ricky of Iceland. Oh, this is ridiculous. You've got a radio crackling away there. Use it. I'm saying what? Say hello. Have you seen my son? Mm. Well, that's my son on the run for any coppers who are listening. Are you crackers? Maybe I am. Can you blame me? My son's been missing for, well, what feels like years, but the minute we get within a sniff of him, he disappears. Tell me I've been watching too much CSI. You've been watching too much CSI. But that smacks of a tip-off. We should have sussed the minute he rang Gary's phone. Well, you're right about that, David Platt. He's played us like a violin. <laughs> He's helped us. If you want to point the finger, point it fair and square at Gary. Eddie, up the alley, it's him. Are you sure? Yes, pull over! <laughs> Dead man, Platt. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Oh. I'm sorry, Mum. I'm sorry. Where is she? Who? Oh. Uh, Natasha. Oh, she's left early to buy herself a frock. Oh, whoops. Oh, spot the surprise. 
A frock for tonight. Oh, Nick, no, no, you can't let her down again. I've got to drive to Coventry. Look, this is three nights running. You'll give the girl a complex. <sighs> you are a rat. You are. She'll never forgive you. No one will forgive you after that. I'll just get her some flowers. She'll be like putty in your hands. <sighs> Thank you. My cash bag, a couple of A to Z, my good blue jacket, the air freshener, air ah. freshener, I ask you. Street rats! They'd have the pennies off a dead man's eyes. Didn't get your fares, did they? A few quid, no matter. I'll pay you back, yeah? I'll tell you how you'll pay me back. Oh, please, love. You're gonna get home, get a bath, get a proper meal inside you, and then you're gonna tell us how you got into this mess in the first place. <laughs> Rosie, she's got the body, she's got the face, but she's just so light. Me, me, me. One high maintenance, hottie. Well, if you like that sort of thing. Whereas, it can't have escaped your attention that there's no I in Graham. You know, I'm a low ego, zen kind of guy. Would she bleed me dry? Most deaf. Would it be worth it for the ride? Tina. Peanuts for the monkey. Three weeks worth of windows, now consider yourself sacked. Well, what have I done? I know that you've been bitching about me on the street. Well, it'll be the last time that you do. You all right? Tina! Tina, Tina. Tina, love. Tina. Oh. 